This is a picture of a purse that uh, I made about a year ago and I used a lot of different techniques in it and so I'm showing it to you here as a way to talk about how we go about building up the design for what I call a purse top. I call it that because I used to only quilt through the fabric and the batting with no backing but when I decided to have a backing with the quilted texture on the inside of my bags instead of a lining I still kept calling them purse tops even though they're in fact front and back usually. So what I have here is I'm going to do a stack of these which is the way I typically would work. I would normally make a dozen or even two dozen uh, quilt sandwiches and then and make them all different colors and shapes and sizes and if I made a big batch like a couple dozen at once I would have some of them be duplicate. I may make them stencil differently or quilted differently or I might make them very similar but I usually made just one of most of the designs and then I would do a couple sets. I rarely ever made four or five all the same. Um, unless you just could see something was doing really well. And so I'm going to be working through this pile and today we're going to get through stenciling I believe. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. If I were actually going to make specific product out of this I would pay attention to the sizing more. But mainly what I'm doing is just doing sizes that I think may come in handy when I want to make something quickly down the road and I'll have these to pick from. So I have all these different stencils that I've cut over time and so I'm going to use a number of different ones and I recommend that you just try to come up with some different ones and just sit and with a little piece of wallpaper like this and cut some and I have a video I'll show you what it looks like on the screen um, and I'll put a link in the end screens and below the video and then you can watch that if you want. It's, it's like four minutes or something. I've tried a lot of different kinds of stencil equipment over the years and honestly I like these sponges the best and this one's been really used a lot. But this has been what I've gotten the best results with. It holds a lot and it's there's a lot of control and it's hard harder to shove it underneath the stencil and get it on the wrong part of the fabric. You know I'm thinking in terms of I'm probably going to fold this in half to make something so I with a lot of these I would only do something on one side and so And so I would just pick something that I thought I would like on there. Like maybe I'd like a big leaf. And I kind of like to start with light colors and then work up to darker ones so that my stencil water, so that my stencil brush and my stencil water don't get so dirty. And so actually, I probably want to stencil on the darkest fabrics first. So this is my tray that I use to wash. So as I so as I dirty uh, a stencil, I'll just put it in there so that I can take it and wash them when I'm done. These are I kind of like these. These are just something to put some little dots and make the design a little bit more complex and I like to use those in a different color than the main stencil. And I have two of those and I did this with a uh, hole punch. That's why they're all near the edge where the hole punch can reach. But so say I decided to do that and then I just need to decide what I want on this. some flowers. And 
And sometimes if you're doing two elements close to each other, you might need to let it dry a little bit and come back to it. And so that might be what I do on a lot of these, is do my main elements first and then come back and add my dots. So here's one. And I think I'll do like one, two, and I maybe will even flip it over so that one's kind of different. So I want a color that'll show on here. And I always like to use a lot of metallics mixed with the whatever color I'm using. So I'm going to try to do this. Let's see. And that is just called Golden. This is Versatech ink and I like it for this. Because I like the color to be sort of mixed, it's okay if your sponge and your water start to get a little dirty. You've seen me do this before when I've done just one. And so I'll speed up a lot of this. I may not have enough gold. See how that orange really wants to take over? Doesn't look like much. It's a little sloppy there. I think we can address that when we stitch. I'm going to put this here. My daughter told me that she had watched a little bit of Bob Ross and that my videos remind her of Bob Ross and I thought that was so cool. I've never really watched more than a few minutes, but of course, I know he's taught so many people how to paint that he put a lot of good out into the world. And so I consider any comparisons to him to be high praise. I don't mind if this gets pretty thick, just like a t-shirt that's printed can get pretty thick. Ooh, not that thick though. Like I say, it doesn't look like that much. So here's this one, and I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I come back to add some of this stuff, which I will do after a bit. So I'm going to set this one on the floor. I think this is actually fairly dark, and so I'm going to put two Two of these artichokes on here, I think would be kind of cool. My artichoke's getting kind of old. So I'm going to do two on this. And I'm going to do them with the same yellow gold with a little bit of orange. So there's my artichoke. This is a fabric that I dyed myself and I kind of like it. I don't have very many of the ones I dyed left, but this one I do like quite a bit. And I'm wondering about some silver. Ultimately I decide to add red to this silver to make a pink color. And you'll see when I pull this up that there is not a lot of difference in the value of my paint and my background fabric. This is an instance where I see in my mind's eye that this will look lovely if I outline the stencil with white stitching. And so I'm going to try to make that happen. And this is just a judgment call. If you, if you feel that you can make something work and you can already see it, I encourage you to try it. If you're just lost, as a rule, go for big contrast when you want elements to pop. And go for similar values when you want them to blend together. And I use this stenciling as a little bit of a guide for stitching. And it gives me it gives me sort of a basic concept. And then there once I have that to go on I can I can really go anywhere I want with it. I don't really care for this brush. It's a little bit harder to control. And I'm pouncing through all this fabric and batting. So I'm going to unfold this, but then I'm only going to work on one side. I, I never really wanted to put design on both sides. It gets to be so time consuming anyway. What the heck, should we do some hearts? 
Maybe we keep them sideways so that they're not quite so hardy. And I think I'll just, I'm, I'm really just thinking about what will show on here. And, and then I, and will I be able to make it look neat? I try not to mess up the neighboring areas when I do that. Just pounce. As long as you pounce, you should be okay. All right. And now this one. You might try doing this with the batting not under there yet. That's kind of fun. What if we then went like this? Try that. Oh, that's going to be kind of neat, I think. Hey, I like that. That's kind of different. That's why I, I really believe a lot of this just comes from boredom. I think I'm just going to do that one. You know, my favorite thing is these artichokes. Maybe I will bring back my artichokes. A little sloppy. Pretty sloppy in there. I might try to, I'm going to let that dry a minute, and then I might try to neaten it up a bit. So you can cut any stencil you want, or you could use a commercial stencil. Here, I'm going to try to make this a little more satisfying. So now I've done a little bit on, on my seven things, and now I'm going to do a little bit more on each one so that I have a little bit more to go on here. And I just want to give you a heads up that um, I'm lending my camera to someone for 10 days and so there won't be a video for two weeks after this and then we'll get back to making these uh, purse tops but I wanted to let you know and I'm a little burnt out on uh, doing the videos because of the editing time. The sewing time is nothing, it's the editing time. And so what I want to do is have pretty patchy coverage over the summer. Expect fewer videos rather than more. And so I'll see you a little bit this summer and I hope you enjoy. We have lots of company coming. We're remodeling our kitchen and uh, that should hopefully be done by the end of June. But anyway, um, happy gardening and camping and all of those kinds of things that you might enjoy. Dining al fresco, all that. Do not let very much time go by before you take the time to carefully wash your stencils and your brushes. And if you do that, they'll last you for a long time and many, many uses. And if you enjoy this kind of work, you'll be glad that you don't have to recut those stencils. So here's what I have after about an hour of stenciling. They don't look like much. Some of them look more interesting than others. But once I add all the stitching and a little bit of raw edge applique, and some painting and in some cases I could even add some beading they'll start to really come alive and I like that they're very different I go for having them be dissimilar although if you really want to push the boredom factor make them all the same <laughs> although that would be really hard to get through I think it maybe some people would enjoy it it's not my kind of thing <laughs>